Peace, everyone. Chief Yuya podcast here. We're at the 81st episode or the 80, 81st segment. Well, episode, yeah. I want to thank you for joining and our subject on this beautiful day or evening or dawning will be challenge, the challenge. And I, I wanted to get into the miracle of what a challenge can represent for us and really our sacred responsibility to answer the challenges with um, the ability to respond, right? Which is a bit redundant, but I think when you word responsibility forward and then backwards responsibility, ability to respond, then it, it gives uh, a little bit more idea of what the perfection of, of what that thought can be and where it can flow from that sacred responsibility. All right. So, uh, I wanted to speak on uh, a couple things, uh, in terms of, uh, this because we are at our last segment for this season. Um, and I'm calling it a season because I didn't really measure out the episodes. Like I'm going to do 20 per season or 30 per season, but I just knew that, um, the end of, of November, I would, uh, take a hiatus in December to re-engineer the segments in the podcast, um, for January. All right. So I'm actually not taking a break. Um, but I'm just kind of changing things up and giving us a time to refresh and invite some new energy, um, into this interconnectedness and this interconnected experience that we have, uh, called the Chief Yuya podcast where, you know, we get to kind of look at some of our, inspirations and our strengths and and how we can consciously own our own evolution. All right. So uh, I wanted to tap on the idea of challenging a for challenge, of course, because we're coming to the end of the year or the Gregorian year. But first, before that, I wanted to address the concept of celebration. And the reason being is because our celebration obviously is a direct experience in being faithful and acknowledging the core of where our goodness comes from, right? Which is comes from, which is the divine. So when we are joyfully celebrating, we're joyfully giving glory or weightiness to the, to the divine, right? A heaviness to the divine. Oftentimes you see the word glory, um, <laughs> mistakenly or, or incorrectly put in into ancient writings, but oftentimes the word glory was used for the term uh kavod. And you know, there's different words, but they you know, sometimes with certain words they would always put the same word. You know, like there would be certain words depicted and it'd always be love. And it, but it wasn't talking about love, you know? So you have a glory that is reflective, but then you have a glory that is weighty, that is heavy. OK, which is something we'll get into at, an, at another time as far as the implications of that, but or the deeper in, in implications. But in speaking about the, the deeply held treasure of celebrations, it's important that we rejoice uh, what happens for us along the way, because we oftentimes are surrounded by enemies that want to remind us. <laughs> through unsolicited opinions of all the different things that they think about us, all the different things that uh, they can remind us that we did not do correctly, all the promises that we we did not uphold and present us with all the sorrow that we can possibly stand, if you will. And so it becomes increasingly important that we find moments to celebrate and remember, most importantly, remember moments where we were thankful remember moments where we you know we we experienced some level of victory in our lives and the more we do that the more we see how important to our our knowing celebration is how much of an important aspect it is because especially now you know we're going into some very dark times and you know not as if they have not already begun but they're getting darker Right. And um, it's not just because we're in the winter season and, you know, the nights are longer than the day. But obviously people are using the agony of um, that whole spiritual myth mythology, if you will, to execute some curtain tearing um, experiences 
or even rituals, one might say. And it's in these times that we have to remember the power of the, you know, um, the inconquerable spirit that's with inside of us, you know, um, the, the, the spirit where we can, again, tap into a measure of faithfulness. We can tap into the joy of being able to feast with our friends and to be able to remember when provisions were provided or we were able to secure provisions and mercy was given to us. Maybe when we didn't even deserve it, you know, from certain people. And sometimes we, we, we lose opportunities to do that because we're so fixated on what we did not get. You know, I still don't feel good about myself. I still have not reached this particular goal. I'm still working towards this. My, I, I'm still drowning in debt. You know, um, I'm still single. You know, I'm still angry. Whatever it is, we have all of these different moments where we can cast these illustrations inside of our minds that will remove the greater and more um, valuable illustrations of parables and proverbs and and affirmations that take us to a place to point us to um, things to be grateful for and remembering of remembering just the good things in our lives. You know, so um, making making a point to celebrate is important. It's, it's so very important. You know, um, life really requires celebration, um, in order to really appreciate the presence of joy and to really appreciate the presence of rest. And, you know, it's one thing as a young man, I was able to really glean from my mother. Uh, she was very, uh, celebratory, you know, um, in a very random sense. So not, not necessarily big birthdays and stuff like we, we didn't actually do any of that, but, um, she would do things like celebrate the, uh, the fall, you know, um, some days she would come home from work and say, Hey, let's go for a drive and let's go look at the leaves. Right. And in doing that, we would just get in the car and we would drive and we would look at the, the, the changing color of the leaves. And that was something to celebrate. Now, you know, as a child, I don't know what she may have been going through, you know, at work or whatever. She may have said, man, I, I need to be thankful. Maybe, you know, these people are getting on my nerves or this or that. And, you know, um, being a, a consciously aware wife and, and mother, uh, I'm sure there were there were certain pressures, especially back in those days um, that she had to deal with. But she found you know, reason Well, you know, maybe when I get home, I'm going to go for a drive with my family. We're going to go look at the leaves and celebrate the fact that it's beautiful outside, <laughs> you know, or sometimes when you're driving to work, you do that. You know, uh, I remember she used to throw parties all the time, which I didn't really like, but <laughs> she would throw parties for the other children in the neighborhood just cause, just cause some days she'd say, um, Tell your friends to come by later. I'm going to have some some food, some snacks, and we're going to play some some music. Why? Just because. And she would just celebrate the children, you know, and she wouldn't even be around. She Here's everything. Said them, she'd leave or we'd be in the backyard or something like that. But, um, you know, just kind of instilling. And that's part of the civilization that a woman provides, you know. Um, that's part of that value of that, that civilizing. And especially when you got a bunch of Ogun children, you know, letting them know that pulling back from all the work and from all the, the different projects you want to do and stuff is important to relax and feel joy. And even if it's just you and your friend sitting down eating some, some, uh, potato chips and some beef patties, like even if it's just that, you know, and it's very purposeful. We're not here because we want potato chips and beef patties. We're here because we want to celebrate whatever it is, you know, um, whatever it is, maybe our, our favorite boxer want a match. Maybe, you know, um, school is letting out school is starting back, Wh whatever it is, but we're going to celebrate every little thing. And when we do that, what we celebrate begins to reveal exactly small pieces and small fractions of who we are and what we value and what we have faith in the most, you know, so you start to, to get opportunities to be reminded of, of your self form as well as your value system, just through your, through your different celebrations and 
the different things that you may engage in. So, you know, I'm bringing this up. One of the reasons is because, you know, at the, at the end of the Gregorian year, sometimes people look back and they start thinking, um, when they take their consensus on their own realities, they start to think back and say, man, I, I could have done this. I could have done that this year. You know what? Next year, boom, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And they start to create what, you know, of course they call, um, resolutions, you know, their, their new year resolutions. And that's cool. If that's your thing, go for it. You know, I'm, I'm not speaking against that, but there are so many opportunities where we can, um, take the, take time to celebrate what we did do this year to celebrate the fun that we did have. Hey man, I'm still alive. This is awesome. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Hey man, I got a great relationship with my children. It wasn't so great the year before the year before that, but this year it's gotten better or with my parents or with a friend, I was able to patch up a, a relationship, man. I'm going to celebrate that. This is cool. You know, um, one of the things that I celebrate often and I talk to some of my comrades about is I am so happy to be living in such a technical time. Me personally, I, I like technology a lot, but some of the things that we're able to do now are right up my alley, you know, in terms of, um, the remote things we're able to do, you know, um, if I know someone who's going through something or I need to speak to them or they need to speak to me, uh, I can not only call them, but I can video call them. Now, you know, there was a time when that was a thing of, of sci-fi and mythology. You can watch old sci-fi movies and it, you know, and of, of course we know like there were certain regimes in Germany that had video, video conferencing technology. But, um, that wasn't a thing that was, you know, um, available to, to the masses, you know, uh, not that long ago, right? You know, when we talk about the introduction of Skype, that's fairly new. And there were a couple of little platforms here and there that would give you, um, voice and video. But at the time, um, dial up was still pretty much present. So you, you know, the quality wasn't that great and the calls didn't really last very long because your bandwidth was so small. Now you can have practically a high definition phone call with, with someone while you're looking at them, sharing files at the same time, listening to music together. You can have a whole party, right? Virtually. And I love it. I think it's beautiful. And it's something that I'm thankful for because that alone, especially, you know, at a time when we've gone through uh, a global crisis and so many people were locked into their closets. You know, they were locked into rooms. Some people had to isolate from family members who were in the same apartment or the same house that they lived in. And being able to have that technology, whether it be FaceTime or WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, or you just go through all of them, Skype, Zoom, whatever. To be able to have certain technology like, man, we can still commune, we can talk, we can experience things together. And though the mo the modality may be a bit different, you know, they, it may not be tactile, you know, it may not be kinesthetic, but we can still share cognitive and emotional and symbolic and volitional and, and auditory, of course, and visual, um, it content back together. So we can still have multiple mod modalities that occur at once just by blending them across tech technological paths. It's awesome, right? That's awesome. So these are things that maybe I might celebrate and you might have your, your own thing. Maybe there's a grandparent that you were able to speak to or to use technology to speak to, or just travel to, you know, maybe because of the remoteness um, that many of us had to experience in employment, you were able to spend more time with someone who might've transitioned or just needed you to be more present, right? So the value of celebrating and the purpose of celebrating is in itself, it's a recognition of what the divine is providing. And like I said, sometimes we get to a place where we're so stressed, we're, we're in such spiritual dismay that we start to push off the 
the opportunities to be thankful, but while still expecting more, which is the, the deep part. I want this. I want that. I want that. And then as, as, um, fractions of what we want are, are beginning to be outlined and laid in front of us so we can experience it. And we're taking steps towards realizing that goal. We, we don't think we should be thankful because, well, this wasn't the full thing that I wanted. This isn't all of it. You see, and that level of ingratitude, which separates the spirit from the alignment of the soul, it starts to create symptoms, you know, um, d- disease symptoms. You know, you'll start to feel more anger within yourself. You start to feel more hopelessness within yourself. You'll feel like you've been abandoned by the divine, abandoned by your spirit gods. I mean, spirit guides, um, even things down to anxiety and depression and, um, you start to, you'll start to question the meaning of your own existence. Question why you suffer. You'll have problems sleeping. You know, you'll start to, um, question and really scrutinize and be skeptical about, um, your spiritual convictions. You'll be complete, you know, like re- repetitively asking why certain things occurred in your life. You know, um, always seeking guidance, always seeking spiritual help, you know, and, and, these sometimes are just products of us losing that sense of, of celebration that comes from gratitude. You know, we find ourselves, um, in a place where those, those different qualif or, or characteristics become present. And, you know, we can help ourselves through those by, for one, getting around individuals, for one, being an active listener of ourselves, being an active, an excited observer of our lives. So we know every time we have something to celebrate, every little thing, every little victory, celebrate it. You know, um, sometimes speaking with people, you know, um, find, putting ourselves into a calm and peaceful environment, you know, talking through the good times as well as the bad so we can get perspective. You see, remembering those good times is so important because that's what we utilize to, sh- to let us, to, to give us strength and encouragement and fullness, you know, when something isn't so cool. You may have a job that you, that you, you know, you didn't have a good day at work, but when you're driving home again, you're looking at the leaves fall from the tree. Man, this is beautiful. Or you say, you know what? I'm going to take the long way. I know there's going to be traffic, but I'm going to ride along the uh, riverside. You know, I'll just sit in the traffic, but I could look at the water while I drive. I could look at the sun setting on the water. And be thankful for the view. I'm going to celebrate the view. How I'm going to celebrate the view. I'm going to play some music I like. That's how I'm going to celebrate it. Or maybe I'm going to pull the car over. I'm just going to pull the car over, get out my car, and just sit and watch the sunset. Maybe I'll do that instead. I don't have to go home right now. You see? All little moments that we find ourselves um, with the possibility to celebrate, which begins to remove us from the opportunities where spiritual crisis may try to creep in because of the mechanisms or machinations of, you know, um, enemy spirits. Because that's all it really is. And sometimes you have people who are used by your enemy spirits. You know, they're quick to remind you of everything that's wrong and you know, or give, like I said, give you an opinion or no, you didn't even ask for it. Like, why, why do you have to have an opinion on my situation? It's my situation. Where'd your opinion come from? But you just feel like you got to give it to me. And a lot of times those are people who are being um, possessed in the moment by those particular entities that are seeking to point you back towards the ground, you know, so that you, you will never set aside anything where you can remember good things that have been done. You know, that is the por- the purpose in having um, celebrations, whether they be um, the festivals of unleavened bread, whether they be the festival of weeks, uh, the festival of the, the day of atonement, the festival of trumpets, tabernacles, um, or the offering of the first fruits, you know, the new year, the real new year, not the one that's coming up. Um, but all, all different things, you know, these are celebrations that want to let us know this is what's important to me. It's like um, setting aside the day of Sabbath, which has already been set aside for you, but, you know, allowing that opportunity to rest and to celebrate, 
Celebrate. I'm going to celebrate my community. I'm going to celebrate the fact that, wow, man, I have a circle of friends now. I have a circle of family and friends. You know, some people went their childhood, didn't really have too many friends, if any. You know, and then they, they get into a community like we do in Anu and we're able to laugh with each other and, you know, encourage each other. Hey, what you up to? What you been up to? How's this situation going? How's that situation going with you? You know, um, crack jokes. What are you trying to do next, man? What's going on? Hey, I'm going to be over here. I'm traveling. Oh, come through. When you come through, let's go get some food. Let's go. Let's go kick it. Let's go to the gun range. You know, all of these different things that we're able to do. Because we have a circle of, of family and friends who celebrate the same thing. So we, we're constantly sharing values. This is what we value. Let's value it together, right? So that's something to be thankful for, right? Having, having that, you know, and, and there's so many opportunities that we get that sometimes we, we skip over, you know, like I said, because we're not really told that there's a point, um, in our lives where we can just spontaneously celebrate, you know, like you speak to those super religious people and you'd be telling them something <laughs> and they just break out into speaking in tongues while you mid sentence. And it's just like, yeah, so got this new job. <laughs> you know, and they just start, you know, he tell my bow time up to my mid you know, it's like, all right, all right. Okay. Okay. All right. I tell my shoe, you tell my shoe. You know, um, yeah, I was just saying I, I got these, you know, melons on sale. They, they got honeydew melons down there at the street at the market. Like I can give you some if you want, you want, I, I got some, I'm not going to eat all these melons. And they start shouting, you know, holding on to your shoulder and praise dancing and stuff. Right. But cool. <laughs> cool. What's wrong with that? Nothing. I'm thankful. And I'm going to, you know, if, if that's how you do it, go on and do your thing. <laughs> Go on and do your thing because our, our experiences don't need to be staged as linear because they're really not. You know, um, sometimes we, we, we go backwards. Sometimes we go forward. Sometimes we go left. Sometimes we go right. You know, and, and, and in that there are times to celebrate where we find new directions. You know, we find new stages where we're, we're kind of moving through the terrain of our lives and, um, we have no way of knowing what's going to happen in next, happen next. People pretend like they do, but they don't really know specifically. Even when you do divination, you don't know everything that's going to happen, you know? Um, and sometimes we'll have periods where we'll seem like we fall off. You know, we have a map that we're following and we fall off the map completely. Um, because that just happens. But when you have a mind that has a, a desire towards things that are certain, it happens a bit less, you know, but, um, sometimes we throw the map away, right? We just forsake it all together, throw it away and figure out some other things that we want to do, you know? So in doing all of these different things, um, we find moments to enjoy the challenges that life presents to us and enjoy the grace that life presents to us. You know, and finding moments to celebrate that are critical. So I would say as we're going into this next Gregorian, let's, before we get there, man, it went by so fast and man, oh my goodness, it was just 2021. Look when it did. Yeah, we know. We say this every year. It went by so fast. Okay. Can we, can we talk about something else now? We know that now. We know they go by real fast. All right. Cool. Now, what else? What can we celebrate this year? What did we forget to celebrate? Hey, what can we celebrate again? Hey, I'll do it again. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we already had the celebration. Yeah, we're going to have it again. Why not? Why not? There's, a, there's enough horrible things that are happening on a daily basis in the world today that um why why not celebrate as often as we, we possibly can? You see? Why not? And And, you know, that may be something as simple as just, Going outside and throwing some glint in the air or, get, or getting some bubbles and just blowing some bubbles and just, you know, let that be your fireworks, some bubbles. Wow, man. What are you celebrating? I don't know. I'm just celebrating the fact that today I was happy. Sometimes I feel a little down and today wasn't one of those days. So I'm going to celebrate. You know, hey, I'm celebrating. You know, I, I've, I, I got a, a fried chicken addiction. 
you know, and I've gone 30 days without eating a piece of fried chicken. I'm going to go celebrate. How are you going to celebrate? Oh, I'm going to jog. I'm going to do some jumping jacks. You know, whatever it is, I'm going to skip a little rope, whatever it is that you consider to be a celebration, you know. So I just I wanted to really uh, emphasize that coming into years and because this could be an opportunity again where those those spirits of of um self-esteem destruction will try to keep to take your mind away from recognizing that maybe you you had a breakthrough this year maybe you've experienced a deeper level of reality you know or you've just experienced a, a new level of experience which sometimes can be the same thing you know and that um you didn't lose your marbles this year. <laughs> there was a lot of crazy things that happened and maybe there were some breakthroughs that you were able to have. And maybe this year you were able to do it without, without psychedelics. You were able to do it without ayahuasca, you know, and, and other, um, other different inducements, drug, drug induced experiences, but you were able to have great and wonderful experiences that contained rich insights in your life this year. And you were able to do it with great value and legitimacy of, of perspective without anything clouding, clouding that. And it was, you know, you, you are not overlooking the simplicity and the naturalness of the stages of your spiritual development. It doesn't always have to be this big explosion. Right. Sometimes you're having breakthroughs that are pleasurable and they're exciting and they're energizing and they're life affirming. But oftentimes um, they could ha looking for that, you know, looking for these big explosions, these big experiences before you celebrate can induce or, or kind of lead to a manic um, self aggrandizement, you know, or kind of like a. um I got to be the spiritual juggernaut. I got to be the spiritual kingpin. I got to be the spiritual queenpin. And you, you overlook the simpleness and the naturalness of some of the, the beautiful um, insights that you can have, because now you're, you're stuck on the, the breakthroughs of, of corruptions of insight. You know, you're looking for bliss. You know, you're looking for that beautiful rapture of the paranormal you know, and all of these different things. And, um, you realize, man, th those are corruptions <laughs> of the natural process, you know, and, and, but you, you keep trying to recapture those very transient experiences, but in the long run, it's not about really much that that ain't about much, you know, so you can celebrate, man, the smallest thing. I found a good book or I had a book sitting around and I oh, cracked it back open, you know, and I, I read a part of it that I forgot or I never read before. And it, it, man, I sat back and closed my eyes for a second and tears came because it, it just hit me with something new, you know, something else came to me. So I'm going to celebrate that, you know, sometimes, especially like I said, through the, through the pandemic, a lot of us have felt of feelings of isolation and we've had these desires to seek out and kind of surround ourselves with other spiritually minded people. And, um, It's easy to get sanctimonious, if you will, and start to speak about who's unconscious and who's not connected to the, the higher reality and things like that. And sometimes you get so much so caught up in that, which is really just a, a level of spiritual, mm, spiritual adolescence, you know, which is a necessary stage to, to move towards spiritual maturity. But sometimes you get so caught up in that and all of that zeal and, and, and um, dogmatism that you don't realize that, man, I do have one or two people I can I can build with. Or maybe I listen to Chief Yuya's podcast and and I feel a level of brotherhood with him. And when I'm feeling down or going through something, I can be encouraged by that kind of thinking that he points to. You know, or the proof that maybe I point to that leads you to the truth of certain doctrines, right? What, what, whatever it is, right? I'm, I'm not telling you what to be thankful or what, you know, I'll just give you some examples of sometimes the things that we look over because we're looking for this great enthusiasm and the enthusiasm or the potential for it is there because there's things that are actually alive and, and around us. 
that we're we're just not unfortunately paying attention to and we end up spending our lives on this spiritual skid row you know where we're, we're always in this very depressed state and we never celebrate anything and when you don't celebrate you you're not giving honor you're not giving thanks celebration is giving thanks to the creator cuz i'm i'm pausing i'm resting i'm giving an opportunity for joy and saying hey man Thank you for these grapes with seeds. Thank you for these watermelons with seeds. Thank you for this ability for me to create this beautiful piece of music. You know, thank you for me. There's a potential for me to create this beautiful child. Thank you for this beautiful man I just met. Thank you for this beautiful woman I just met. You know, wh- whatever your, whatever your bag is, <laughs> you know, but when we kind of always are jumping over our stages really quickly and like, they're just not a big deal. Then, um, our joy, we, we tend to boycott it and some of our depression becomes protracted and from months into years. And it's sort of this continuum of emotional and mental pain because, um, that disassociation and that terror, it, it takes hold because we don't take time to, to face the challenges in life small or large. And sometimes the challenge is to celebrate is to find something to be grateful for without just being very mundane and and insincere about it. You see, you may have a good phone and I'm thankful for this phone, (laughs) you know, because I can listen to these podcasts. Speaking of phone, their mind just beeps off. (laughs) I can listen to podcasts and I can watch videos and listen to my music. I enjoy and, Whatever, man, I'm thankful for this. This is cool. Thank you. You know, um, there are different things that will trigger an emotional response like fear and anger and despair. They're going to be there, you know. Um, but there are also things that we're surrounded by that can produce these sort of alterations inside of our sensory per- perception and physiological responses, you know, just in how we view it, how we look at it different, differently. You know, and it doesn't, again, have to be an exaggerated sensitivity, you know, where we're over overwhelmed and overstimulated. It doesn't have to be that, you know, um, we can go through a process and just give our processes an opportunity to confront and to heal our heartbreak. We can celebrate the opportunities we have right now to confront and heal our disappointments. We can celebrate the opportunities we have right now to confront and heal our trauma and those things that are lodged deep down within our psyches and inside of our bodies. You see, we can celebrate the opportunities to shift the practices that we currently do, you know, and learn different techniques. So we're not always left with this feeling of being lost or this feeling of being trapped, but we can shift gears as we want, that's something to celebrate. That's a victory where we can move towards practices that are grounding and healing and stabilizing and move towards uh, greater explorations of self-care. You see, this is a natural, beautiful thing that we can do. And like I said, for some of us, this may be the challenge, right? So speaking of challenge, um, I wanted to get into that just for a moment because like I said, with challenges, um, we get an opportunity where we can dig beneath the surface of our lives to find meaning and to act in ways that kind of reveal the essential, the essential secrets of creation and of how we interconnect with all of life. You see? Uh, when we get an opportunity to connect with our joy and with our strength and with our inspiration and to participate in our evolution consciously, you know, we, we can explore and challenge ourselves through our language, through our story that we tell about ourselves, our other, our others, our culture, um, the way we utilize rhythm the way we utilize music and, and different meditative techniques, the way we utilize our dreams, you know, all of these different ways give us an opportunity to seek 
and to gain greater understanding and to kind of connect or, and re- remove those things inside of us that have been imprisoned by surface things and surface ideas. You know, we can get to a better place of understanding beyond the concrete that we may have built around us that's separating us from being able to ground who we are, you know, and um, that understanding becomes so, so critical, you know, that we, that we manifest that spirit of understanding. It becomes something that's very fluid for us, you know, and something that we're able to say um, it's helped us to establish a greater connection, you know, in everything we do, every spiritual practice that we do, every affirmation we make, we're connecting with our source. You know, we can ask ourselves through challenge, man, is this working? <laughs> is this thing on? You know, is, is it even working? Um, does this thing that I'm doing, does it lead me closer to the truth hidden inside of, of the moment? Um, does it make me more compassionate? Is it opening up my heart? Is it expanding the boundaries of my soul and, and allowing me to connect more, um, more easily and, and, and more, more, uh, safely to others? Um, or is it separating me? Is it blinding me, um, to the beauty that's around me? Am I becoming more, um, condemning of things that are around me? Are my senses being dulled? You see, if, if you're engaged in something, it's a challenge and it, and if it doesn't grow your love, then it, it isn't for your heart. You know, for, cause your heart is a manifestation of the supreme love, you know, or love supreme, you know? We call it Ahava Rabba, you know, that's the, the supreme love or the greatest love, Ahava Rabba, you know, um, or again, like Coltrane gave us love supreme, you know. Um, so we have a great opportunity now to look at some challenges and to start to look at what is, what is working what what is within us that is tradition and that we feel is fixed and what doesn't fit our sensibilities you know towards those things that allow us to mingle and and reach the innermost parts of our heart you know to participate in a process where we cultivate and nurture our inner life as well as our outer life and create a life that is spacious enough that we can pay attention to the small little shiftings and small voices and the small things, you know, and those are the things that we get to a point where we can celebrate, you know, where we can, we can kind of celebrate and experience that infinite treasure of the present moment. We can only do that if we can hear the voice and we'll only hear the voice more and more, the more we celebrate and show appreciation for when it shows up and ask questions like how best can I serve the divine? Sometimes we're, we're expecting to hear this big, profound, esoteric answer. And it's, it's just not that deep because the truth is we, ser- we best serve the divine with whatever we're doing at the moment. You know, we spoke about holiness on this, the past, um, uh, Yom Rishon or, or Sunday or first day. You know, I was on a YouTube channel, I know life global ministries. And you know, the, the thing about it, that's a challenge you can ask yourself, man, how can I make my experience holy in each moment? And, you know, sort of tap into that flow of spirit and fire that flows between beneath my feet. How can I be a part of that? You know, how can I bring my, all of myself, my heart, my mind, my body, my spirit, my memory, my aspirations to the experience of the law, to the experience of the divine? Cause it does demand my full presence, right? And that would, would mean setting aside old interpretations and allowing truth to emerge in between the spaces between, you know, old interpretations and myself until it becomes so big that it breaks everything apart. You know, that means I have to become vulnerable. I have to acknowledge the feelings that I'm feeling and the things that may trigger me and begin to follow the trajectory of the associations that I make with certain things in life. You see, that's the spiritual challenge is going to make you uncomfortable. I mean, it's just, it's just going to do it, (laughs) you know, um, but it's worth it. Even when you start to look through your dreams and what do my dreams mean? And 
Um, if I'm the one who dreamt it, why did I dream that? You know, what pathways is my subconscious seeking to open up? You know, um, is my dream illuminating my inner landscape in a way that is holding the key to my waking wisdom? So when I wake up, I got something worth saying, you know, um, and can I celebrate the reception of that gift? Thank you for that. Thank you for that dream. Thank you for that inner awakening. Thank you for that, that knowledge, you know, that was presented. So with that, we see the value willfully of, of a challenge, right? And, um, the value in celebrating. And, you know, for those of us who are part of the same culture and trying to realize the same keys to the same vision, you know, we have this dream exegesis, if you will, where will, where we are all kind of having the same collective vision or the same collective dream. And, when we understand that we are an experiencing this exegesis, it's not, it's not about somebody's dream from 50, 60, 100, 200, 300 years ago. It's about the dreams and the visions of, of what's happening inside of us. And in this moment and the people who are here now, you know, and there's a truth within that there's personal truth. And then there's, there's universal truth, which is the real one, <laughs> you know, we may enter through the personal and if we're able to stand in that and kind of hold, hold through that, hold, you know, hold together and don't just get nostalgic or historical or sentimental, then we get rewarded with the cosmic or the universal wisdom. And that wisdom transcends the personal and it connects you with the true treasure of your humanity, you know? So I wanted to, I am. Um, I, and I know I maybe should have done this last strong to give you all time to prepare, but I want to present a challenge for us to close out 2022 in a way that is, um, affirming and perhaps, um, helps to connect us again to the streams that we want to connect to and call up the energies that resonate most, most with our, our exaltation, you know, and our evolution. So I want to present some challenges here and I'm going to explain them and then we can, um, yeah, we can make a decision. I've already obviously made my decision what I'm going to do, but I'll explain them to you a little bit. Right. So let me just pull this up, make some notes. So I got, I got three different levels of a challenge, first level, second level, third level. Right. And we're going to do this, uh, for the, for, like I said, for the month of, um, December, and the descriptions for this will be in the, um, the, what's it call it? <laughs> the, the, the blog posts for this, uh, the blog posts for this, um, for this, this, uh, podcast. So you can always look at the blog posts on chiefyuya.com. Um, they also show up in Apple podcasts as well, but chiefyuya.com is probably easier to read it from there. All right. So you can, in case anything I say you miss. So. For the men and the women, it's going to be slightly different. And then there's some things that are going to be the same. All right. So first thing is, you know, for the month of December, we have 26 working days because we exclude the Sabbath, of course. Right. Because Leviticus 23, 32, right. 23, 2, 3, 3, 2. It is Sabbath. It is a Sabbath rest to you and humble your souls in the ninth of the month and the evening between evenings from evening and unto evening rest your Sabbaths. Right. So what does that mean? That means obviously it's a call for acknowledging the Sabbath, but it also lets you know that evening to evening is what signifies the day. OK, so when I say 26 days, I want you to understand what that means. And then that will help you to understand some other things. So, for instance, sundown today to sundown tomorrow is that's the one that's one day from sundown to sundown the next day the, the day that's active ends at sundown and the next day begins at that same sundown okay so if, let's say if wherever you live today sundown was at 5 p.m okay so then that, if it was tuesday then at 5 p.m it is no longer tuesday it is now wednesday and will be wednesday for the next 24 hours up into the sundown of the next day, which then it'll be Thursday. Okay. So 
this challenge will be from day start to day's end. That would be a good way for you to for you to work it through it. And I'm going to tell you what it is. We're going to have a physical category, a spiritual category, a mental category, and a love category. And there's some other things I want you to do, but we'll we'll get into this. So let's start with the men. All right. Um, and we're talking about again for the month of December. For the month of December, we have three different levels: level one, level two, level three. And the higher up you go in level, the more progressively difficult the challenge is, right? So for level one, 1,200 push-ups for the, for the month. For level two, 2,600 push-ups for the month. For level three, 5,200 push-ups for the month. And I, I included in there a bonus level, 7,800 push-ups for the month, all right? So now I'm telling you guys now, as you're listening, I'm doing everything at the highest level. So I'm going to do the bonus level four, which is 7,800 pushups for the month of December. All right. So everything, whatever the top is, is what I'm, what I'm going to do. All right. And I'm not doing that to, sh- to show off, but, um, I'm not going to ask you to do something that I'm not going to do. <laughs> All right. So that's just, you're going to be the chief. <laughs> you know, you, you want to, you want to be the king, you got to wear the crown. Right. So, um, crayon. Crown, crown. I always say those two wrong. Crown. I said it right the first time. So everybody who knows me, I know they're laughing right now. Who knows that behind the scenes? I say that word wrong all the time. Um, so keep in mind. Okay. So the first level is 50, 50 pushups a day. That's it. That's 1200 a month. You know, in a, in a, my phone is going crazy in a 26 day month. That's 1200 a month. I mean, 1200 a month, 50 a day. And you might be like, man, I could barely do five or 10. That's cool. If you could do five, all you got to do is five, 10 times. And you have from day start to day's end. You literally have 24 hours. You'll get this done. Don't worry about it. You know, if I had to do 50 pushups a day, a day, and I wasn't used to doing them, and let's say I get down, I'm like, man, I can, I can only do five as a man. Okay. Well, I'm going to break it up because. I might break it up in over across 10 hours and just do five every hour. Boom. There's my 50 for the day. If I do that for my 26 days and I still get the rest on Sabbath, I've got 1200 pushups in my pocket for the month. So even when you get out of bed, if you could roll out of bed, do a quick little stretch before you even brush your teeth, just get down on the side of your bed, knock out five. Boom, 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 boom. And if you know, okay, before I go to bed, I'm going to do five. Boom, 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 boom. I only got 40 now to do throughout the day. And the, the reality is after you do that for a couple of days, your count's going to go up anyway. You're going to be like, man, this 50 is nothing. Because if you start at five in a clip, I can only do five. After a while, you'll be doing 10. No push-ups on your knees. That's for the men or the women. All right. So I'm putting that out there right now. No knee push-ups. Now, if you need a little bit of assistance and you want to lean on something like your chair, you know, um, you can do that. That's, that's not a problem. If you need to do incline push-ups and take some of that weight off of your arms, not a problem. And if you have even more struggle on that level, cause I know we have people of all different fitness levels who listen to these segments, you can do isometrics against the wall. So you just stand against the wall, you put your arms on the wall and you, and you push up and back from the wall, just like that. So you're not, you know, you're just getting that nice little stretch in there. And you are pushing some weight back. And of course, the further you lean back from the wall, the harder it will be. Okay. So that's something you can do. And that's basically just rocking back and forth. All right. So (laughs) if you can't rock back and forth, then maybe the physical challenge won't be for you. All right. But, um, again, and then you have the 200 pushups a day. That's 2,600. 200 pushups ain't about nothing. You You should be able to do that before you breakfast. Um, then you have 300 pushups a day, which is the three, the third level challenge, right? Which again, you could do, um, breakfast, lunch, dinner, you know, first thing in the dawning, knock out five sets of 20 or four sets of 25, two sets of 50. Boom. I'm done. Now I got a whole nother four hours or so before I got to do my next set. Boom. Done. Then I do another set before sundown. Done. 300, you know? Um, no, actually, I'm sorry. I messed that up. (laughs) 
That is the, the third level, excuse me, is 200 push-ups a day. So the first level is 50 push-ups a day. Second level is 100 push-ups a day. Third level is 200 push-ups a day. Then you had a 300. I'm going to do the 300. Okay. But, you know, do whatever you, whatever you feel your fitness level allows you to do. Um, cause I'm not going to do, well, then again, I'm, I might do a 300 in a sitting. It depends on how my day is going that day. But if I, if I don't have time to do 300 in a sit, in a, sit, in a sitting or for whatever reason, I'm just not feeling it. I'll break it up. You know, I might do 150 in the dawning, 150 in the evening. I'm done. 300. Easy, easy peasy, Japanesey. All right. Now for the women, uh, we also have push up challenge. So your challenge is going to be 390. That's level one. Your second challenge is, um, 650. And your, th- and your third challenge is 780. Okay. So you sisters, you don't have a, um, a bonus level, right? But that's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry because there's another thing that you could do too. If you're like, man, that's too easy, right? So 390 pushups for the, for the month is 15 a day. So your first level of challenge is just to do 15 pushups a day. Again, you could break them up. You know, if that's difficult, you could do five, 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 five in the dawning, five for lunch, five before you go to bed. Done. And again, you can lean on something depending on your fitness level. You could just lean against the wall. You know, if you know, well, I ain't getting down on that floor. Okay. No problem. Just lean against the wall and just push yourself back and forth. Boom. That's it. Okay. So that's the level one. And then there's a level two where I told you it's 650 for the month. Um, and the 650, that should be 25. My, my head math is right. That's 25 for the day. Okay. So, you know, you, you might be like, man, I could do 25. All right, cool. Good. Good for you. <laughs> you know, just knock out your 25. All right. And you could break that up five times if you want. If you still like, man, I can only do five at a time. Well, you, you map out your day where you're just doing five, 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 five. That's it. Done. Um, then our, our next level. From there, for, and this again, this is for the women, it's 30 push-ups for the day. So that would give you 780 push-ups for the month. Okay? 30 push-ups for the day. And depending on your fitness level, I know 10 push-ups a lot, you know, that may be difficult for you. Um, if I, you know, to break it up just three times, but you know, you can break it up more than that. You could break it up six times, five times. And again, you don't know how to do them the same. So if you find like, well, I can get down and give you a solid 10. Then after that, my number starts to drop. No problem. Do your solid 10. Maybe after that, it'd be five. Now you're halfway done. So the rest you could do leaning on something. If you want to lean on the edge of, of a table or, or some chairs and do your rest like that to, you know, take some pressure off. Or if you want to lean against the wall, that's fine too. Okay. Um, then we have, uh, also for the women and the men can participate in this too. I'll let you know now that I'm going to be doing this too. Right. So I'm going to be doing every challenge at the highest level. Um, our walks. All right. So for your first level, you're going to be doing 26 miles for the month. For your second level, you're going to be doing 52 miles for the month. And for your third level, you're going to be doing 78 miles for the month. Okay. So that first level is just one mile a day, a mile a day. And again, I recognize that everyone has different fitness levels. If you can't do it, don't do it. If you need to consult your physician, whatever you go on, do that. Nah, that's what you're supposed to say, right? <laughs> um, and again, like I said, I probably should have told you all of this last strong to give you time to prepare because the first is like right around the corner, but you know. Um, get in where you, where you want to get in and you could always catch up if you don't the first couple of days, if you, you know, you can catch up later, but yeah, your first level, um, 26 miles, it's a mile a day, right? And you could break that up too. You could do a quarter mile, um, throughout the, like you just need four quarter miles throughout the day. So I suggest if you keep your phone on you or you have a fitness tracker, turn it on. Cause you know, you might be getting that, those steps in there. And not even realizing it, going to the driveway, walking around the backyard, whatever, whatever it is, walking to the store and stuff. You might, you might be surpassing that. 
Your second level will be 52 miles, which is two miles a day. Okay, that's two miles a day. And then the third is three miles a day. Okay, three miles. And that's your um your 78 miles for the month. All right. So uh, women and any man who wants to join in, I will be doing the three miles with you. I'm going to do it with you. So I'll be doing the 300 a day push-ups and I'll do, and I'm going to tell you how I'm going to do it, right? You might want to do this. You might not. It's up to you. This is how I usually do my, um, running. Cause I don't, I don't like running much. I love to walk though. I am a walker. I will walk. I, I, I'm one of those people who can walk across America, right? I am a avid walker. Running in, I can take it or leave it, <laughs> but I still do it just because you know I'm I'm supposed to, right? But the way I do usually when I run, to keep to make it interesting for myself, is I do my other exercises in between the ones run. So if I want to do push ups or if I want to do squats or whatever, I'll usually drop down and do my push ups every quarter mile, right? I, I like running around tracks. I know people find tracks boring, but I find it easier to run around the track when I'm running through the streets and stuff. I feel like I get tired quicker. Um, I don't know what it is. The track gives me something to focus on. I don't know. It's focus is, is easier for me. So like every time I come around that track once I'll drop down, do whatever, how many pushups I want to do, whatever, keep going. And I, I tend to enjoy my runs a bit more like that. Right. Or even my walks. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do when I'm doing my three miles a day. I'm going to do the same exact thing. Um, probably every half mile I'll drop and do maybe, I don't know, 30 push ups, something like that, you know, or 40, depending on how I'm feel, how, how I might feel. And then boom, just keep going from there, you know, see how many I can, I can push in between the walk. I had to keep the walk from being boring and I get to knock out some of those push ups. I get to knock out my miles and my walk at the same time. All right. So that's something you can do, too, depending on your fitness level, because another thing that I have in there for you women is squats. I know you love your squats, you know, and we know why. And we love them when you do them. All right. So your first level of uh, squats, you know, we have we have three levels. OK, so your first level of squats is going to be five hundred and twenty, five hundred and twenty squats. OK, now 520 squats is 20 squats for the day. If you do 20 squats every day, um, you know, for the 26 days, you will have 520 at the end of the month. And it's all different height. You don't have to go all the way down to your, your buttocks is touching the heel of, of, of your, your shoe or your foot. You don't have to go that low if you can't go that low. Don't even worry about it. We all have different kinds of knees. For some of us, it might just be getting in and out of a chair. If you have a sofa or even your bed, getting sitting down on your bed and then standing back up from your bed, sitting down from your bed, standing up. That's a squat. If you could do it without your arms, that's excellent. If you can't use your arms, it's all good. Don't worry about it. All right. So um, your first level will be, like I said, the set that will give you 520. Um, your second level on the squats is 50 per day. So that's 1,300, 1,300 squats. Okay. I know we, we, we getting more into, <laughs> into the elite class, you know, but again, you, you pick whatever level you want to do. You pick whatever level you want to do. And then our third level is 2,600 for the month. So that's a hundred squats per day. That's a hundred squats. Now I know some of you women are already doing squats. You're going to be like, that ain't about nothing. All right, cool. Just do it. <laughs> just do it. and It won't be about nothing. Fine. <laughs> right. But keep in mind that what the difficult part about this will not be doing the exercise, but it will be doing it every day. Remembering to doing it, you know, ske scheduling around it, making sure, especially a walk, a three mile walk. You're not going to do that. And, five minutes that, you know, you have to set aside time for that, but we can double up on stuff. Right. So that's your physical challenges, right? That's your physical challenges. I am going to do all of them with you. So I'm going to do the push ups. I'm going to do the, um, walks and I'm going to do the squats. Okay. I'll probably do Hindu. I like Hindu squats more than any. So I'll probably do my Hindu squats because my Hindu squats, and this may work for you too. Anytime I work my legs, I got, I have really big legs. 
So my my you know when your your legs have the biggest muscles in your body and they they hold all that growth hormone. So when you start activating those legs, you might find that your testosterone you know, like you feel stronger. So I'm gonna do I like doing Hindu squats because they raise my chi. You know, so I'll do those probably in between walking and running. I mean, yeah, I'm sorry. Well, I ain't running. <laughs> I ain't running. But I'll be doing that in between the walks. Hindu squats and probably cobra push-ups as well. I'll mix some of those in there too. Because you could do push-up variations. You know, for those who may be a little bit more advanced, if you want to do wide grips, diamonds, you know, um, tricep push-ups, you know, whatever. H- however you, you, you want to do crossovers, you know. If you want to do um, explosive push-ups, you know, whatever you, you feel like. Or you just want to do, keep it faith, you know, good and old faithful, you could do those too. It's fine. It's perfectly fine. The bottom line is we're going to do it together, right? That's that's the key, to t- the togetherness, the unity, as Rick James would say. All right. So, and it's going to be a hot man winter. Watch. Just watch how you're going to look at the end of it. It's going to be a hot man winter. Trust me. And a hot woman winter. So now that's our physical challenges. Spiritually, we're going to get into some meditation. Same thing. Level one, two, three, level one, 260 minutes of meditation. Now, some of you who are decent with the math, you may know that that now that's 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day of meditation. Okay. That's level one. Level two is five, 5,200 minutes of meditation. Um, Wait up. The first one was 10 minutes, right? So actually that should not, that should be 520. I'm sorry. <laughs> 520 minutes of meditation, right? So that's 20 minutes per day. Then the level three, you know, the super Saiyan, Saiyan level is seven, 780 minutes. I don't know why I got thousands in, in all this. I, I don't know. And I wrote it out. I put thousands. But that would be 780 minutes of meditation for the whole month if you do a half hour a day. Again, you don't have to, if you could do it all in one sitting, awesome. I'm going to do mine in one sitting, but you can um, break it up. You could have three sessions of 10 minutes if you want to do 30 minutes. If 20 minutes is, you know, or let's say even 10 minutes is difficult for you, you could break it up. Five minutes in the dawning, five, five minutes in the evening. Boom, done got it knocked out okay so here's another thing we got a mental challenge or we're not done we're we're covering multiple areas mental challenge where you're going to do um your first level is 260 minutes of reading per month for the month level two is 540 minutes of reading for the month okay 540 minutes okay now so so that's about um 20 minutes of reading. And then you have, um, the, your level three, which is, um, 780 minutes per month, which that's a half an hour of reading a day. Now, let me put something out there for you. I know that some people, we have all different sort of challenges. Sometimes our eyesight, you know, might even be financial challenges. I, I can't afford any books right now. And I don't have any books. You can do audio books. Okay. So if sitting down and, and reading the text, you know, if that's just something that's, that's too big of a challenge for you right now, audiobooks. You can go to archive.org and you can listen to all kinds of free audiobooks. You can go to YouTube and listen to free audiobooks. You can even go to the same platforms that you're listening to this podcast on. They also serve up audiobooks. All right. So you can look up a nice audio book you want to listen to and just, all right, I'm going to give you 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. And think about it. You could be listening to your audio book while you're doing your walking or your push ups, knock them both out at the same time. OK, that's going to be our mental challenge. And then um, we have a love challenge. We have a love challenge. And that, of course, is in three levels. The love challenge. Uh, the first one is, or the first level is 26 love letters for the month. All right. So that means one every day. Second level is 52. That's two every day. And the third level is 78 love letters. That's three a day. Now, what does that look like? You can physically send letters to someone or someone's, 
right? You can physically do that. Um, you can also, um, if you don't have people's address, I know we live in a day and time now where you might have friends you talk to for years and don't even know where they live because it's all online, you know? So if you want to write them an email or jump into their inbox and express appreciation to them. So a love letter doesn't mean that it has to be amorous or, or what you may call romantic. It could just be a letter of appreciation. Just want to let you know I love you, you know, and thinking about you and da 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 da. So I'm going to do level three. Okay. I'm going to do three letters per day, three letters. And some of mine are going to be physical and some of them I'm going to use emails. And maybe I might, if I have to use, I don't think I see myself using text. Um, but if I have to, maybe I use WhatsApp or something. But for the most part, for me, I'm going to be all physical letters. I'm going to sit down with my pencil and I'm going to write them or I'm going to send cards and write inside of the cards or I'm going to send emails. That's for me. And you do what works for you. I keep addresses. <laughs> so, you know, I, I have a lot of people's addresses. So for me, it might be a little a little easier. Right. And I understand everyone, their associations are different. But you have three levels levels of that. You're going to do a, a journal every day during the month of December, every day. And that journal you can keep in a Word document if you want. You keep it in Google Docs. You could write it down. You can have a notebook in your house. And it doesn't have to be long entries. Right. So I'm not going to give you any kind of letter limit or minimum on that particular thing. It, you might one day just be like, I'm happy. Close the book. That's it. That's my journaling for the day. Today was a decent day. Saw a butterfly landed on my finger. Cool. Done. You know, today I went to the bathroom and wasn't too much blood in the toilet. You know, great. You know, whatever it is, whatever, you know, you could journal whatever you want. All right. Um, now this is another piece I would like you to do over the month. This is part of the challenge. You're going to set up a battle plan for the month for, for the year 2024. That means for each month in 2024, you're going to pick a theme. January, I want to do this. February, I want to do this. March, I want to, I almost forgot to order the months. March, I want to do this. April, I want to do this. May, I want to do this, so forth and so on. I want you to pick three major things that you would like to achieve in 2023. Three major things. And you set an agenda for those months based on those three major things that you want to do, whether it's you want to save up some money, I want to go on a trip, you know, I want to do a rite of passage with my children. Um, I want to get some professional certifications. I want to join some professional organizations. I want to join some spiritual organizations, whatever it is. You know, it might even be I want to read 10 books. I want to read five books. OK, so you're going to create a task list for 2023. And you're going to pick a theme for each month. This is what I'm doing this 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 month. Okay. And then um, that will determine your agenda. All right. So that is the challenge for the month of December. All right. So you're going to have a break from, from me. So the time that you would have devoted into um, listening to these podcasts and taking notes, you could devote that time into your battle plan for 2023 and your journal. And then you just have these, these physical, uh, spiritual, mental, and emotional or love challenges for the month. And again, if all of this is difficult for you, you could pick level one through and through, or you can, um, do a hybrid of levels. You might say, well, um, I'm not that strong in the reading department. Cool. You could pick level one and just listen to 10 minutes a day of, of, some, of a book on, on, not, I'm sorry, on YouTube or whatever. But you might say, but I'm real good with meditation. I could sit for 30 minutes and meditate because I got a park right next to my house. I love sitting out there, put my jacket on and just sitting. All right, cool. You, you know, so you might do level one on the reading and level three on the, on the, the, um, meditation. And, you know, you might do level one on the pushups and then you might say, but I'm strong with the squats. I'm strong with squats. I, I can do, you know, a hundred squats a day. No problem. Okay. You know, so you can mix it up a bit. And again, these, um, I'll leave the, um, listing of what is what inside the description for the podcast. So you can always go to chiefuyan.com and, and you can get your information there.
Um, and I just want to put out there again, like I said, I'll be, you won't hear from me. Um, at least here, we'll still have our, some of our, our new presentations, but I, I gave the team a break also for the month of December. So the only thing we'll really have going on as far as public broadcast and our new is, um, the Friday fellowships, right? And we'll be going on our, our retreat again, the middle of December. So we're all looking forward to that. You know, again, it's time to get together and celebrate. And enjoy each other. Another year, man. Look at this. Another solstice. We get to see each other's faces and, and, you know, eat and be by the, well, I don't know if we're going to do the campfire because, we, you know, we'll be in Florida. But, um, yeah, man, just kick it with each other and have fun and enjoy each other's space and company, man. You know, so that's something worth celebrating. All right. And again, um, if you have any questions, you send them to questions at chiefyuya.com. Thank you for the questions that have already come in. I will be addressing them when I come back in January, when I come back in January and going forward, any questions, anything, comments, whatever you want to throw in, send them there. Questions at chief com. questions at chief dot com. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to um give you your space now. I know this was a, a long one. It's an hour and like 11 minutes, but, um, you know, I just wanted to give you that challenge for the month of December and, you know, uh, think about the reasons you're going to celebrate even right now in this moment. Maybe the challenge is something worth celebrating. Oh man, cool. It's give me something to do. All right. This is great. This is constructive. Yeah. I want to do this. Be, this would be cool. You know, there's so many different reasons that we have to celebrate. And I, and I, I definitely will that you take all of them, all of them, man, because like I said, we're going into a dark time and, um, we're going into a very rugged space very soon, and we're going to need these opportunities to be a part of community. See, that's the key, the community. That's why we can celebrate together. We got people who think like us, who celebrate the same things, who the same things are important for, you see, and then we can provide that. We can provide strength to each other, you know, and covering for one another. That's important. All right. So I'm going to leave you with that. And um, I have so many tasks that I have to get on to myself, but I wanted to get this word out to you all. All right. So I will see you all, um, whatever day in January, <laughs> um, that I'll be back, but I'll see you all in another 30 days for another season of the chief you podcast until then, please definitely get on those challenges and let us know how it's going. You can, um, you can, uh, comment under i'm going to upload this audio to youtube as well so you can leave your questions and comments under that video under the chief you ya youtube channel all right so it's um you can go right over there youtube.com forward slash chief you ya and you can leave comments under there um and of course you have this podcast here all right and any questions it shouldn't be too many questions um because that means you stalling because <laughs> you got to get started the first is what i think thursday so hey Hey, <laughs> let's get on it. All right. And like I said, I'm, I'm in it with you. I'm in it with you. We'll be going through this, this beautiful challenge together and uncovering things about ourselves and our systems together. All right. Be well, everyone. I'll see you soon. Peace. Thank you for listening. I just want to remind you all that you can now send questions for the up and coming season of the Chief Yuya podcast to questions at chiefuya.com. That's Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N-S at chiefuya.com. C-H-I-E-F-Y-U-Y-A.com. Also, if you'd like to contribute in any way to our Red Rap Initiative for Displaced Women, head over to anulifeglobal.org forward slash Red Rap. That's A-N-U-L-I-F-E-G-L-O-B-A-L dot O-R-G forward slash R-E-D-W-R-A-P. If you'd like to join my ministry, Anu Life Global, go to anulifeglobal.org. A-N-U-L-I-F-E-G-L-O-B-A-L dot O-R-G and click the join link. You may get sponsored by me or one of our other uh, members. If you find that these podcasts have helped you in any way, please leave a review 
on iTunes. If my books have helped you in any way, please leave a review on Amazon. These podcasts, along with my, my music, can be found on all of the streaming platforms. Thank you, and keep putting the work in.